Blue Chew is making waves by bringing more confidence to the bedroom with their chewable tablets that will help you last longer and stay stronger in bed. Does this sound too good to be true? Well, guess what? You can try it for free. Just pay $5 in shipping by going to bluechew.com and entering code HOLLY to get your first month subscription. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Adam and Eve. If you go to adameve.com and use code Holly, you get 10 free gifts plus free shipping. Adam and Eve has everything from lingerie to movies to sex toys, whatever you need to spice up your time in the bedroom. Adam and Eve has got it. So use code Holly at adameve.com for 10 free gifts plus free shipping. All right, let's introduce my guest today. I have worked with her for a few times this year, actually. Most recently last month for my fine art book, which I swear to God, I'm going to finish one day. (laughs) I know I've been talking about it for years. It's going to happen. I'm sorry. I got a lot going on. Um, And then also when she was a twisties treat, for the month in May. She's been in the industry for about two years now and has already made quite the name for herself, including getting her own Evil Angel showcase and appearing on the cover of Hustler's Taboo magazine. I am so excited for you to get to know Maddie May. Hello. 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 How are you? Good. Good. <laughs> I get awkward, guys. I don't know Hello. why I got awkward, I don't know. too. I don't know. <laughs> I pushed up my glasses like a nerd and I'm like, okay, now what? Hello. I think it's because like we worked together that day. There's something about Maddie's vibe that vibes very well with me. We were talking. Stoned. <laughs> we were talking on set about how, like, I think I called you a bitch or something like that. Yeah. But like in a very affectionate yeah, it's a way. Bit, yeah. And I only call people bitches if I really like them. So I'll be your bitch. Yeah. So okay. I, I I can't remember what I called you. But I just feel so comfortable. And it's just, I don't know. Yeah. It's like, it's like flowing water, guys. Yes. Just flows so nicely. It flows so nicely. So nicely. Like a leaf or a lily pad on top of the pond. <laughs> I'm full of them. Oh, my God. Maddie. So shall we start from the beginning? Sure. Should we, should we start from the beginning of your life story? Might as well. Uh, you're from a small town in Arkansas. Yeah. What was your upbringing like? So it's bigger now. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't like it. But growing up, I grew up um, uh, on a farm. Mm-hmm. It wasn't our farm. It was our neighbor's farm. But that's just kind of how the South worked. It was called Cabot, Arkansas. And um, I grew up with horses and dogs and cats, and those were like my my thing. And I. I loved riding horses so much. So the guy that owned it, his name was Rick, and he became like a second grandfather to me. And um, I met him when I was three. By the time I was seven, uh, when I was five, I created uh, my own twin because I wanted to ride horses more. So I learned if I would just go, because he was a really old man, I learned if I would just go home, change my clothes, put my hair in a different type of ponytail, and go back, I could ride for another lesson. Nah. Yes. And that went on for like a year because like it was it was they didn't my grandparents didn't really talk like that. It's just like, hey, I'm gonna go to the barn, yeah. hop the fence and I'd go. So finally, um, it was a breeding farm and the, the stud took out our fence. So my grandparents were talking and he said, how is my, my fake name was Melissa. He was uh-huh. like, how's how's Melissa and Maddie? And he goes, who's Melissa? And he calls me outside. He goes, what? I was like, I just wanted to ride horses more. <laughs> but it. it it was very country and very redneck, and I loved it. That is so cute that you created, like, an alter ego for yourself. Yeah, I just wanted to write because you could, you could, I was only allowed one lesson because it was me and his grandson. I was like, no, no, no. I love this, though. I oh want more. God. That's mm-hmm. so funny. You don't ride horses anymore, do you? I, tr- I try to. Um, I found a horse that um, actually through porn, he was uh, just – renting out his 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 ranch and there's a stud who has a little bit of trauma so i like a fixer-upper he's not rideable yet but 
he he he's he's a good boy. Yeah, he's trying. What kind? So what kind of discipline do you ride? Do you ride just Western or? I'm trained in all, but I um, prefer Western. I was a barrel trainer and pole, mm. so I competed and trained horses in barrel. We broke them, so we would breed them, grow, raise them, break them, sell them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Have we talked about like my equestrian past? If I told you that I was an equestrian? Very, very minimal. Okay. Yeah. Because I did, I did English and I did three day eventing mostly. Yeah. My whole life. I mean, horses was my whole life. That was my personality. I was a horse girl. Yeah. yeah. See, I didn't, it wasn't my passion. It was my mother's passion. Yeah. And if anybody knows Suze Randall, you generally do what Suze Randall says. Mm -hmm. And so for those first 18 years, I rode horses because it was her dream. And then uh, when I was old enough to go to college, I was like, fuck you, we need horses. And I haven't really been on a horse since, I'm going to be honest. Do you want to be? Nope. Nope. See, I'm the opposite. Mine was like your, like your mom. Mine's a passion. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. Yeah. I just big and fun and powerful and I loved it. I mean, there was, I'm not, I don't regret riding horses because I, sh I, you know, did a lot of shows and because I rode yeah. every day, there was a lot of discipline that I got from it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it somewhat kept me out of trouble. I, I still got into trouble <laughs> in high school, but not as much, not as much. Um, so yeah, I'm grateful for that, but it's just like, not what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to do other stuff, but I mean, you know, like if I go to Hawaii, I'll, I'll ride a horse on yeah. the beach. I mean, it's, it's, it's like riding a bike. I can get right back on a horse and I'm oh, fully absolutely. confident that I could do everything I did before. That's why I picked a stud as my first project back after a few years. I'm like, you know what? You're 16, five and you have trauma. I want you. Is there, is this like, does this correlate with your dating life as well? Or is it this just specifically only horses? With, with, with going, with going back? Oh, just, you know, yeah. no, 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 not going back, oh. but just like <laughs> someone who needs help, someone you yes. have to break a stud. Yeah. I don't know. There's just like too many, I feel like there's coincidences. Yeah. I mean, I actually honestly don't know anything about your dating life. I don't know people you've dated so so I could be wrong but. no you're abs you're absolutely <laughs> <laughs> right um and I had this epiphany the other the other day too because like I used to go for the big meat heads like mm -hmm. the gorillas that had no brain I'm like oh come here let me let me help you let me mm -hmm. guide you in life and then like once I grew into an adult and even I don't give a shit even in my relationship through in porn that I've had I was like I like, I don't know. I don't know. I like a challenge. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, you know what? You, you're a little rough around the edges, but you know what? I have some sandpaper and a couple drills and let me just like go at it for a little while. Mm -hmm. And how has that worked out for you? Um, I'm divorced. <laughs> <laughs> so well, very well. Everyone needs one. Everyone needs one. You know what? To be honest, I, ab everyone needs to start a marriage. Yes. My old boss Trial used to say marriage. that. And yeah. it's true. Like it's true. I, I'm also was divorced and I learned a lot from that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I, and my husband who I'm with now also had a previous wife and we both feel like that need to. helped us like form the really great relationship we have today. Yeah. You, you have to have a, a you have to have a trial run. Yeah. You have to have a trial run. You don't, you have to have those bad experiences, I think, to know what you want. hundred percent. You know, hundred percent. Cause some people are like, like my best friend, she settled, like she loves her husband. Absolutely. But there's things like she doesn't want to stay in the same state. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a big thing. Mm -hmm. And he does. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's hard. That's hard. I'm like, you yeah. have to go through that trial marriage to find the hundred to hundred. I also out. feel that sometimes this is something that I learned with my relationships with men over time is that I know this sounds like very dramatic, but sometimes like love isn't enough. No, I feel like you have to have the same goals. You have to have the same like beliefs and ambitions, ambitions yeah. like beliefs in terms of raising a family. Like if you want to have children together, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of things that have to sync up, um, you know, and obviously love too, but I, you know, some people that they're polar opposites and there's no way that their lives could mesh in a healthy way. And they're just like, but we're in love. I'm like, but love can be found anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I, I truly believe that you can, I don't know. Do you think that you can like, I don't know if true love is the right word because when I think of true love, I think like Disney princesses and that there's only one in the world. Do you think you could have more than one true love in your lifetime? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cause like, even though like 
not to be a nerd. I think, um, cause I mean, everyone's still primal. We still have those primal things like men they're That's why a lot of them can't be monogamous. Cause like mm-hmm. naturally you're not meant to. Yeah. I think it's the same thing. We just have different compatibilities. Sometimes you can like, you're better with some people than the others. And sometimes maybe his job and career mesh is better, but his, his dick is better. Yeah. It's like, which, what do you really need? Yeah. And that changes throughout your life. Mm-hmm. Like the things that you need when you're, 18 versus 28 versus mm-hmm. 35 versus 40 yeah. can be all different things. Yeah. It's, it's funny because my husband and I think about like how in high school, cause we actually went to co-current high schools. Like okay. our high schools are very close to each other. And, but yeah. he's three years younger than me. Cause I'm a fucking boss ass cradle robber. Um, <laughs> that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> it's actually two and a half years. It's not that much. It's, but anyways, we didn't know each other in high school, but yeah. we like absolutely would not have liked each other in high school. Like no fucking way. Yeah. Like he was such a douche. I did just look at the pictures of him and old videos of him. Like you were such a douche. That's how I feel about my partner now. Like I like he'll show me pictures of him in high school and he's like, look, that was me. And I've looked him dead in the face. I'm like, baby, I would not have talked to you. No. I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I would have been such a bitch. Yeah. No, he was very much like the kind of guy that I would not have gone for. He was like the emo, like mohawk, like skinny jeans before, Uh, like went to like the women's section for skinny jeans because skinny jeans weren't a thing yet. I'm like, no. (laughs) <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but this would not have happened. I wore cowboy boots. I could not have your your female skinny jeans on the back yeah. of my horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, no. My husband was the kind of guy that, like, I guess he went to, like, Lake would go to Lake Havasu during the weekends and wear his fucking diesel jeans like in the water. Okay, and cool he was guy. just like, cool yeah, just like cool and like that stupid surfer haircut. Um, and then he also, you know, because I did like a bunch of drugs in high school and fucking Didn't like, <laughs> I mean, no, not him. He's like never done drugs. He's smoked weed, but he's That's never it. done drugs. Never. And he thought people that do drugs are losers. He's like um, that I, kind of guy. And he was I, like, I would have never ever dated nah, you. I would have tried to get you high, bro. Yeah. No, I, I would have slipped like a little, a little pill here and there and your food crushed it up. And like, hey, <laughs> let's go roll for a little while. Let's take some ecstasy. <laughs> but we're like perfectly compatible now, so you never know. Do you find it hard to date? Um, I've been in a relationship with the same guy up and down for like since since I moved out here January of 2021 mm-hmm. to one, zero. A year a year ago? Twenty one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Couldn't remember. Um but even though he is in the industry, he's a he's a director. Mm-hmm. I it, it has been hard to date. Mm. He has even though he films it and we met that way, it grew to having the typical issues. Yeah, you hear that a lot. It's mm-hmm. not like uncommon. No people. And what's weird is like my ex husband didn't have an issue. Mm. Wasn't a cuck, but yeah. didn't have an issue at all. Yeah. And then I date somebody that filmed me and then he had an issue. I was like, it kind of threw me aback a little bit. I was yeah. like, I was like, oh, wait, wait. But don't you know, like you filmed this. Don't you know that like I'm not in That's love with That's how you people. met me. Yeah. I was fucking your friend. Yeah. And so how does he like, how does he rationalize that? Um, He did for it with anger for a while. Mm-hmm. But then it got to the point I told him because like I'm 28. Mm-hmm. I'm a grown ass woman. I was like, you can either get on my boat or you're going to have to get off my boat Mm -hmm. because it came down. He was like, well, I can't have Maddie and you. And I was like, well, they're kind of one in the same. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're kind of one in the same. I'm very authentic. It's just a different name Mm -hmm. and a camera. Yeah. (laughs) That's the only real difference. I was like, I have ideas. I have plans. I have ambitions. I was like, I'm not going to stop them for somebody that can't take care of all of my needs plus some. Right. Now, if you can double what I make every month, then we'll talk about me taking a few steps back. Yeah. But until that happens, yeah, that wasn't going to happen. So um, he still had issues. So I, my showcase, I made, I made all first, and ironically, all of them were things that he did not care for. And I said, "This isn't my career choice. You can either get on board and support me, or you can get off the ship." Mm-hmm. He's he's on. I was going to say, you guys are still together. Yeah, so he's on, and he's he's stopped. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, you know, these things are a work in progress. And it was, I was his first porn star. Oh. So that was the, 
was like, I've never done this before. Oh, Oh, goodness. Welcome to the fun life. (laughs) (laughs) So speaking of porn star, how did you get your start in porn? Stripping to camming. Okay. Mm -hmm. I used to think porn was cheating. On, on your significant other. Uh-huh. I mm-hmm. used to think if my partner watched it, he was cheating on me. Oh, you're one of those. I was one of those. Oh, no. I know. My poor ex-husband. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> Look at me now. Look at you now. Are you proud, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, God, you're one of those. Mm-hmm. Man. I know. I still was okay with stripping. That's the thing. I was still a stripper. So, wait. Hold on. So, could your man go to the strip club, but he couldn't watch porn? Is that what you're saying? If he wanted to, he never did. But I okay. was fine with that. So you were fine with that? Yeah, because I was stripping. Oh, okay. But only if he came <laughs> to see you strip. No, no. It was just like I knew what it was and I knew the girls would never really give a shit. Right. But for some reason in my head, I was like, if you can get hard for other people, that was my problem. Because at the strip club, he's not getting a, a boner. How do you know? I mean, I'd hope not. Who knows? Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Why else would he go to the strip club? He never, well, he never did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I was one of those. I used to think it was, it was cheating. And then after stripping, there was like drama after five years. I was like, look, I'm too old for this. I'm tired of it. Mm-hmm. So then I went to camming and then I was like, mm, AVN, MFC. So I went to just go as like a cam model, met Brooklyn Gray, mm. looked at her. I said, bitch your tits. She said, girl, your ass. Or I, it was reversed. I said her ass. She said my tits. And I, I was like, well, hello. She's like, do you want to do porn? I'm like, well, I'm kind of already am on my on camming. Mm-hmm. Were you just doing solo stuff then? No, my ex-husband actually um, joined in. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was very supportive. Okay. Yeah. Clearly. He supported you with his penis. All the cum. <laughs> covered me with it. <laughs> As you are covered in support. Covered you in support. You were swimming in support. Show me how much you support me, baby. <laughs> We're going to measure it. How much do you support me today? <laughs> do you wear your glasses during cum shots? No. It it's gives, like, a, it's, it's like, like a, a reflecting. Yeah, I know. It's like a thing. Though. I wish like because then I wouldn't get glasses. cum in my eyes. You've never done a cum on the glasses? I think maybe like once. Oh, it's like yeah. a thing, isn't it? But they won't let me on set. They're like, it messes with That's the true. It does give you reflections. They're like, poke it out. And I'm like, oh, God. so I'm still going to get a cum, <laughs> a, a cum eye. I'm like, come on. <laughs> then you just take where I hate people who wear glasses without lenses. Like only Blippy is allowed to like, do don't, that. Like, don't do that. So don't. Stupid. Could you imagine I showed up here today and these weren't prescription? I'm just like, hi. <laughs> you can still see my eyes, full face of makeup, full lashes on. Like, hello. <laughs> I could not. I could not. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, where were we? Okay, so Brooklyn. You met Brooklyn Gray. Yeah, and she was like, "So do you want to do porn?" And so I met. Um, my old agent. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you should let me do porn. And they were like, you have tattoos. And I'm like, "Mm, but I'm a whore. And they're like, well, we'll see. So then like they started like watching me through the thing. And so I finally had like my meeting with them. I'm like, hey, I'm a whore. They're like, "Mm, maybe. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, fuck the tattoos. Fuck the fake tits. Give me a second. So then I finally wore them down and they took me on. And then I just kind of, I kind of ran with it. I kind of, stepped in and I was like what's the fastest way to get from A to B and they said anal so I just kind of so what was your very first scene like your first professional scene oh it was awful it was exploited college girls oh. uh-huh good old exploit wasn't come fiesta I feel no. like the last few girls that have cut on have their first scene was come fiesta which I had never heard of before I've never heard of that one it's a reality kings thing I think I don't know if it's still around, mm. but interesting. Exploited college girls, also like great name. Yeah, like mm, come on, <laughs> like come on, and it was just, it was just everything about it was just like. I don't promote it. I don't share the pictures. I, I have buried it. It was <laughs> awful. It well, was now like, you told everyone on the podcast about it, so everyone's gonna watch it. I know. I couldn't lie though. You asked, I'm like, oh, I can't okay. lie. Okay. We grow from our experiences. We do. Look at me now. Everyone needs a starter porn scene. Casting couch, bang bus, or the van. Like, I, ugh. So why do you just dislike them so much? Is it you or the production? Why did I dislike that scene so much? Yeah. Just the talent and the production and the hotel room situation. Mm. It was just did what, they have you share a hotel room with someone else? Uh-huh. Ugh. Yeah. 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 
I'm like, mm, okay, weird. Wasn't a fan. Mm-mm. So, okay. So then what was the first scene that you did that you were like, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what I was looking for. Shit. I don't know what it, I don't know. I don't know. I think probably the one where I was like, I really want to do this was um, probably my Mike Adriano one because I was traveling back and forth for six months because I didn't want to move out here if I was just going to be like a thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, The nicest way to put it. Yeah. It's also so expensive to live out here. Right. And I didn't want to if I was if I was going to be a porny, I wasn't going to be able to afford it. And I didn't want to like uproot my life if I if it wasn't going to be worth it. Yeah. In my mind Mm -hmm. as an adult. Yeah. And, um, so I was like A to B, they said anal. I was like, cool. So I contacted Mike and got a training kit. It took me three months to prepare with two cancellations. I'm like, I'm not ready. Cause I've, I lost my anal virginity on camera. With Mike? With Mike. Oh, wow. And it wasn't even like cut, let's warm up. Let's stick a dick in your ass for the first time. See how you are. I said, no, I wanted my authentic reaction on film. <laughs> And how'd that go? He contracted me for eight scenes. So terribly. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> and you know, like that whole thing, like when someone takes your virginity, you become obsessed. I, to this day, Mike, I'm obsessed with your dick. <laughs> I love it. He knows I do. I baby him anytime I work together. I'm like, let me take care of you. I will not work for his site if it's not with him. Aww, no. I'm like, that's so sweet. I lo- He's just so good in the ass. Yeah. So that was whenever I was like, okay. You know, there's something to be said about You know, there are some people who are like horrified at the idea of your first sexual experience being on camera, but if it's with a professional and it's somebody that you trust yeah. and there's something about like being on set in a place where, you know, everything's consensual, everything's safe. There's other people around, like you're not, you know, with some like drunk guy at a party There's something that's, that could be actually, I don't know, sometimes better. I mean, I know girls that have lost their virginity on, on set. That's hot. Cause like I asked around, I'm like, who, who would help best for losing my, my anal? And they Mm -hmm. said, well, Mike is the king of ass. Like Mm -hmm. that's his fucking thing. He's the king of ass. Mm -hmm. And over those three months he texted me and we talked and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable. And I mean, if he's the king of it, why not just go to the professional that knows the most about ass and be like, Hey, baby me. So what did he, yeah. What did he teach you? Like what makes him so great? Besides the lube and just how, like, he makes you feel special, Mm -hmm. which is great. Other talent do that, too. But, like, he gives you a training kit. He gives you, like, the bathroom set up with literally everything you can imagine from, like, bobby pins to dental floss to hair ties to tea tree oil and um, energy drinks and, like, anal anal um, safe snack bars. And it's just, like, you walk on in there and it's, like everything is taken care of and it's Mm -hmm. calm. And then he's very gentle, even though he's got a really big dick, he's very gentle Mm -hmm. and he just, he makes you feel pretty and he makes you feel good. And I love it. What is an anal free snack? Like anal free bar. So I let or anal safe, sorry. Anal safe. So they're my favorite are the Bobo bars or Bob bars. I think they're Bobo bars. Okay. And, um, they have like, like, like rice crispy treat shaped ones, but they're like apple or like cinnamon, but they have this really good one. And it's like a little, a little, my demonstration for everybody. It's like a little mini cupcake, mm-hmm. but it's apple pie and you open it and it's an actual filling, mm-hmm. but it's all just like oats and vegan stuff and just healthy. Mm-hmm. It's just good. What, what should you not be eating if you're doing an anal scene? Hot Cheetos. Mm, yeah. I could burgers. Crab. Crab, that's random. <laughs> One time I was like, ballsy. did you like hit up a red lobster before you went to the scene? I, once I and- hit up a crab shack, <laughs> like the, the boiling crab. I was like, you know what? I don't have anal to like, I think it was like 4 p.m. the next day. I was like, oh, it's only six. Great, perfect time, right? Hey, call times moved to 10 a.m. I'm like, oh, fuck. Don't do it. What happens? It was just very um, painful because I got spicy crab. And then oh. You- and I had, I didn't have as much time to uh, digest. Oh, so no. I got like extra Cajun with hot sauce with oh, like a no. side of like, I was that. Oh, no. Don't do it. Don't. 
Don't do it. Just stick with bananas. 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 Banana. Everybody has like a, di- what's your anal prep process? Because everybody has something different, I feel like. So I have um, this like little bowl, my mm-hmm. enema. It's the only one I use. I love it. And I call it just like the swish and spit. I don't, it's just, it's, it's more fun to say. Mm-hmm. So I just um, start stretching a couple days before. Mm-hmm. The night before I'll stretch to the size of the, the person. And I just like swish and spit until I'm I'm clean. And sometimes, like, if I eat crab and I have to get it or my call time gets moved, sometimes I, like, TMI, I plug it, I put the enema in, and then I plug it, Mm -hmm. and I make – I force it to get up here. Oh, that makes sense. I don't try – I don't like to do that because it's painful, but sometimes you have to. You do, like, an inversion table. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that would work really well. It does. That's why I was fine to work the next day. (laughs) But – um. And then I just stretch and I keep my plug in. I have to keep my plug in though right before. Okay. Otherwise I just like close up immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you stretch, do you put like different sizes butt plugs in and then like watch TV or? Yeah, I watch TikToks. Okay. Or play with my cats. I don't know what it is, but anytime I'm anal training, my cats want to come and curl like right up on my like my tit. Mm-hmm. They're like, hi, mom. Mm-hmm. You're laying on the floor. Let's lay with you. Mm hmm. It's a whole thing for yeah. children, for fucking children. <laughs> um, so I want to hear about your Evil Angel Showcase, of okay. course, all the firsts. Yes. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. So stick around. We'll be right back. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew is making waves by bringing more confidence to the bedroom with their chewable tablets that will help you last longer and stay stronger in bed. And the best thing about Blue Chew is you don't have to go to a doctor to get your prescription. It's all done online, discreetly in the privacy of your own home. That means you don't have to go and sit in an awkward appointment. You don't have to stand in line at the pharmacy. You will have a licensed technician who will find the perfect prescription strength for you, and you will have it shipped discreetly to your door. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, and after you get approved by one of their licensed medical technicians, you will have your own supply of bluechew.com tablets shipped discreetly to your door. Does this sound too good to be true? Well, guess what? You can try it for free. Just pay $5 in shipping by going to bluechew.com and entering code HOLLY to get your first month's subscription. Blue Chew is going to change your sex life by bringing you that added confidence in the bedroom that you've been missing. Hey guys, we are back. Okay, so all the firsts. Maddie, yes. tell us about your Evil Angel Showcase. Very intense. Very What's it intense. called, first of all, for um, anyone who wants to look for it? Isaiah Maxwell actually named it. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, Maddie Mays Mayhem. Oh, love it. Yeah, he came up with it. So um, I wanted to do my first DP for this year mm-hmm. for AVN and Expos. And um, a couple people were interested. But I was like, what if I could get more? Because you mm-hmm. never know unless you ask. You never – it's 100% no if you don't ask. And it's a 50-50 shot if you do. Like Wayne Gretzky says, you lose 100% of the shots that you don't take. Exactly. Or you miss 100%, something like that. Same thing. So I was like, okay, well, I I knew these people could do features. I was like, but what about Evil Angel? And I had worked for them quite a bit with really good. Um, I I'm I'm just a hardcore performer. I'm mm-hmm. just an evil girl. I've learned that over the two years of starting at col- exploited college girls to now. Like I'm just that's my that's mm-hmm. my bread and butter. I love it. I, it's it's my I I love it. Mm-hmm. And I reached out to Chris Streams because. So I like, um, I call it noodling. I like autoerotic asphyxiation a little bit. Okay. A lot. Um, and I chose Chris over Darko just because there was a scene I did with Chris and I explained to the talent, we had worked multiple times. I was safe. I was like, Hey, can you like, can you fuck me up a little bit today? And they were like, sure. And so he did. And I kind of started to like pass out a little bit and Chris stopped it. Mm -hmm. And I was and and actually like did what directors are supposed to do and like, hey are you like are you good and I was like no no we talked I liked it so from that point on anytime I worked with him 
he would allow me to push myself to that point, but he would just move the camera so it would still be fine for for film. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to push myself, I want to push myself and embrace everything sexually that I can. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to take this moment, I'm not doing it for the for the for the the check mark. I'm if I'm gonna do it, I want to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Chris, hey, what about this? I was like, could do you think we could get a showcase? He's like, well, what can you offer? And so I offered first trans, first gangbang, first DP, first double vag, double anal. But it, double vag, double anal in the same scene or separate scenes? Same scene. So it's it goes. My first scene is a DP mm -hmm. with Isaiah Maxwell and Jack Slayer. Mm -hmm. Then you go to two a, guys with tiny penises. Very tiny. I <laughs> fucked with roller skates on the entire scene. Wow! In your DP, in, in your first DP, in my first one. Jeez. And. I mean, I suck at skating, so I looked at both of them. I'm like, y'all are big, so and they were like, we got you, because because mm -hmm. and I I also I picked the talent, and I asked for full creative control, mm -hmm. was also something that I wanted. I was like, I want to create it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to just be an evil showcase. I want it to be my showcase. Mm -hmm. So I got I got that. So I picked Isaiah and Jax, and they put me in like a bridge. So like Isaiah's in my butt. And I'm like back bending. Mm -hmm. It's like jacks in my mouth. And I was like, this is weird. I was like, they were like, this is what it's called. I'm like, thanks for teaching me. Mm. Then you go to the next scene of the movie, which is DP double vag double anal mm -hmm. with Mick Blue and Seth Gamble. Mm -hmm. And I got waterboarded with champagne. It was amazing. Wow. It hurts, but it was and sticky, but it was fun. Mm hmm. And then I went to my first trans, which is with Emma Rose. Mm -hmm. Love her. Gorgeous. Love her. And then my last one, um, which is my favorite, which was a gangbang. Mm -hmm. Cody Steele, um, Alex Mack, John Strong, Seth Gamble, and Mick Blue. And Seth actually hasn't done a gangbang in 13 years. I was going to say, like, Seth doesn't usually do gangbangs. He doesn't. He hasn't done one in 13 years. And I was like, please. Like, for me yeah i was like for me i was like look at but i presented it i was like look at what i'm look at what i'm doing though look at everything i'm doing i'm like i just i need your i need your name i need you sir i need your performance i need your energy i need your name like help me help me make help me break the internet and it was filmed really cool because it's not just like you walk in the girls there then five guys come mm -hmm. it wasn't that so it starts off with a blow job I go to the next guy in a different room for vag. Then I start going down the stairs for anal. And then I go onto the couch for um, a DP. And then everyone swarms in. And then it ends in a blow bang. Oh. It's like a whole, it's like my worst nightmare, like shooting every single room of the house. Yeah, so it I was. Relight and remike and repo. Five well, we times. didn't have to do many lights. There was really good um, natural light, but I know. <laughs> it's just so funny because. Yeah, every time, like, my crew always complains if we have, like, a script where we have to shoot in, like, all these different parts of the house. We're like, oh, God, this is going to take forever. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really, really good. Mm -hmm. It was everything I could have fucking wanted. Um, I actually, I, I passed out on set, too. I got choked hard enough, and I'd, like, I went out, and I woke up, and I was like, Hi. <laughs> and it was just like the best. It was just anything that you, if you guys go watch it, it's everything was just so like, I mean, I'm grinning. I have no, the way I your have face no lights up when you talk about this movie is, is I, I love it. Sweet. I fucking love it because like you have Jackson Isaiah, which is a great, like sexually, not, not even names, just like sexually, like mm -hmm. they took care of me. And then it's like Mick and Seth and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah. Then it's Emma Rose and she helped, she taught me how to fist an ass. I never fisted an ass. And she's like, wow. I was like, she's like, do you want to fist my ass? I'm like, I don't know how she goes. I'll talk you through it. So wait, so give me some pointers. How do you fist an ass? No nails. So you, uh. you, you start with the umbrella, you go in. And then start with the okay umbrella and then you go in and then she said, you'll feel like a little like a, a tighter spot. And that's when you start to turn. And then when you turn just a little bit, you go further and it'll close your hand. Oh, so the anal cavity automatically yeah. closes your hand. Interesting. But that way your thumb's under it. Okay. And your thumb's go. Oh, wow. Right. It's there is a whole technique. Yeah. And so that was a first loved it. And I was like, it's like they got BTS of it. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, is this okay? Like, am I good? And she's like, you're so sweet. And I'm like, 
I did it. <laughs> Yay. It's like an accomplishment. And then I had like all the sexual chemistry and guys that I fucking wanted for for my fucking gangbang. Mm-hmm. It's just. Uh. Let's talk a little bit more about the gangbang um, mm-hmm. because first of all, it's like one of my favorite subjects. And, you know, it's considered by many people outside the industry to be this like the pinnacle of degrading a woman and everything that's wrong with porn. Yeah. So what's your answer to the people who who would look at that and think, this poor girl is being exploited. She doesn't want to be there. This is awful. Porn should be illegal. I think they're idiots, as harshly as that may sound. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you watch it and you sit there and you're like, oh, my God, that poor girl. Do you guys not realize how this girl is literally being taken care of? She, yeah, she's getting fucked, but one, she's getting fucked within her limits, whether it's hard like mine or easier like others. And she's doing no work, no work. I didn't have to do a thing. If they needed me to flip over, flip, flip. Hey, are you good? I got elbowed in the face on accident and they stopped and kissed my forehead. That's not, that's not a bad, that's not an aggressive thing. Mm -hmm. Like if you accidentally hit me and you go to... I'm like, okay, I'm baby. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, I think that's the pinnacle of being babied mm-hmm. for a girl. Like, yeah, it's intense, but you're just so euphoric. Your endorphins are going, your dopamine, the orgasms, like you are in bliss. You don't even know where you are. I was, I didn't even know where the camera was. I wasn't paying. I had people moving my head. I'm like, okay. <laughs> this, oh, this is where I need to look. Oh, okay. Now this, I got that's it. what's so great about working with, season male performers is that they're always aware of the camera um and they'll like turn you to it so there's not a lot cody john alex and mick i don't have to do shit yeah yeah at all zero and i'm like this is great so many whenever i interview um a porn star about their gang bangs like people who love to do them they always say the same thing they always say like Mm -hmm. why wouldn't i love it i feel empowered if I'm being worshipped by all of me. these men, they're here for me. I hear that all the time. So why do you think that the general public sees it the opposite? Because they, I think that a lot of the general public still see men as the 50s style, like the men are in power, the men are the, the ones in power. Because still, like, with politics, the men are still in power. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's hard for them to see that, even though it is a situation like that, the men aren't in power mm-hmm. and I don't think people people don't like change people don't like seeing things that they could feel uncomfortable with and I feel like if people started seeing gangbangs as a female empowerment it would change a lot about what they think mm-hmm. like, I think it also has to do a lot with the fact that people have a very hard time believing that women enjoy sex that we're not here just for their pleasure right mm-mm yeah, there's, I think there's a lot of that. There's a lot of inherent misogyny, I think, in in yeah. believing that and automatically painting the woman as the victim. Women are freakier most of the time than men. But you're not allowed to be Mm-mm. because you got to, no. like, hold on to your chastity and your virginity. And by the way, if we want to talk about, like, fucking selling your sexuality, those people that, like, you know, remain virgins until marriage, to me, that's just – you're selling – your virginity to the highest bidder like the that's guy all who's it is willing to, who's like, gonna buy who's gonna uh, pay for pay your dad a cow like <laughs> yeah that was the wrong sinus didn't come out correct but you knew what i meant i know what you mean yeah, yeah i mean historically things. yes like yeah. women where you had to be chased so that your father could find Courting. the highest bidder to sell you to like the and the who's man the that would pure? take you who's the best one to take you yeah like no I enjoy my sexuality. I love, I just want women to realize that they should, they do too. Like normal women, mm-hmm. like civilian women. So it's like, girl, like my best friend, her husband was very, very closed off. And now she's selling feet pictures. Good for her. It's a step. It's literally. Yeah. <laughs> it's a step. <laughs> um, has your sexuality changed at all since you've gotten into sex work? Yeah. I used to be very vanilla. And now I like a lot more hardcore things. Um, never thought I'd do a gangbang. Never thought I'd do double anal. And it's 
I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. And so, like before, like I never even did anal. Two years ago, I never did anal. And mm-hmm. now that's my entire showcase. Mm-hmm. And I, I've learned that I can be free on set and I can push my limits if I want to just with a conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, let's you cool with like me doing this today? Yeah, cool. I'm fine with that. That's a go for me. It's a green line. It's mm-hmm. like fun. So it's like I have a safe environment to like I've been testing stuff out, like spitting on me. That was one. I was like, can you like spit on me? And I was like, oh, OK, I do like it. It just grows. Or yeah. Being the newest one, um, I was doing content a couple days ago and the girl was holding my head down while I was sucking dick and he plugged my nose. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't breathe. And I was like, oh, I like this. I was crying. I, I came up, I was like, I like this. He's like, you like that? I'm like. But you felt like you could you could stop him and, and say, and I don't like this. And then like it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, again. I know for a fact, if I would have just touched his hand, yeah. Cool. And everything would have been fine and no one would have judged you for it. Yeah. It's an interesting dynamic, um, you know, porn sets, because it is if as long as you're working with the right people like this, this place where because it's so uncomfortable for most of us to talk about sex with our partners in like our personal lives and in the bedroom. And certainly yeah. for people who aren't in the sex industry, yeah. you know, most people don't communicate with each other about Mm-mm. what they like and they don't like. And it's like a weird, awkward conversation. I think they still see it as taboo. Yeah. And I think also too, there's something about, I don't know that your partner should just know what you like. No, you know, they can't feel it. Right. Like, my, like my partner, when we have, when my boyfriend, when we have sex, I don't know what it feels like for you. Mm hmm. I have it, but I don't know what it feels like. Like, tell me what you want. Tell me what you like. Like, mm-hmm. it's just talk. People yeah. shouldn't be ashamed to talk. But it's, but it is, it's hard. I don't know. I think a lot of people feel like it breaks that like intimacy and that magic. I mean, I know I look, I've been working in the porn industry for 25 years. Yeah. And before I got married, I think that I definitely felt that way. Like, I'm seeing a new guy. I don't want to like sit down and do a boundary checklist first. Like, it feels like a weird thing to do. But on porn, it's like required yeah. and expected. So it's I mean, a different I, dynamic. Yeah, because I guess like even in situations when like you're meeting someone that's not like if I met somebody that's not and like it's like they're trying to like rub my pussy from the outside and like I move their hand over, porn people would just be like, okay, didn't skip a beat. But sometimes civilians could be like, oh, is it a problem? And then they start making it, you know, and they feel judged. Yeah, and it's like, like oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not doing it right. I'm not doing it right. And it's yeah. like, it's. I don't know. It's sad. Yeah. I think also too, it's, um, well, I think because people don't give feedback a lot of the times too, you know? So when you get it, it's weird. Or people give fake feedback. So they teach these guys that this That's is what so they true. like. And yeah. it's like, don't fake moan. If you're not into it, just say, Hey, yeah, I'm not into it. I've, I've been guilty of that in my past I where too. I've faked orgasms and I've faked yeah. like something felt great and it didn't, I don't do that anymore. And I haven't yeah. for a long time, but I did for a long time because I think like, You also, as a woman, and I'm sure as a guy too, you feel Mm -hmm. pressured to make the other person feel like they're doing a good job. Yeah. Because it's awkward to tell them that they're not. Yeah. You know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Are you more submissive or dominant in the bedroom? Bratty. 100% sub, but a brat. I will talk the most shit to you. But you do it because you want to be punished for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Put your belt around my neck and- and, and I and like try to pull me, I will pull back until you force me. And I'm like, mm, okay. And then give me five minutes and we're starting over. Uh, you said in the past that you're very superstitious and you have routines on set that you can't deviate from. Yes. What are they? So one is any anal scene, I have to have my enema mm-hmm. and my dilators and my Uber lube. Mm-hmm. Even if it's the same like brand and bottle, I'm like, no, 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 that's mine. It's, it's mine. I love it. I have to have it. Or in the mornings, um, <laughs> weed and Red Bull, not either weed and red, an energy drink. Mm-hmm. I have to. Mm-hmm. If I don't, I feel just like out of whack. And it's just it's just a whole thing. It's a whole thing. And I have to wear my Crocs. <laughs> I know. I was not expecting that last part. <laughs> yeah, I have to wear my Crocs. I can't like today I came in like sneakers, guys. Which is fine. Which means you're not doing anal Which today. Which means I'm not I'm not putting anything in my Which orifices. Which means my plans for after this podcast have clearly gone out the window. <laughs> I got Tori yesterday. 
you got tore yeah a little bit i had to kill a scene first oh, time no. i've ever had to kill a scene because i started bleeding they were like oh, we have no. two positions left do you think i'm like <laughs> no oh, no i'm sorry that's a bummer yeah but anyway crocs it's because i didn't wear my crocs Mm. Oh, really? You didn't wear your Crocs? I didn't wear my Crocs. There was an audio issue. There was some other issues. And then that was an issue. And I was like, this is why I didn't wear my Crocs. So basically, if you show up in Crocs and like it's you're ready for day. anal sex, it's like yeah. that that myth that women who wear white pants yeah. are up for anal. Yeah. <laughs> in your universe, it's Crocs. Crocs. Crocs and bonnets. <laughs> Which is hilarious because I fucking hate Crocs and Why? my husband yeah. loves Crocs. Have you tried them? And he has several Crocs in like different like Does he have colors. The on them? No, he's not that that. My he's Excuse a man. Me. Excuse me. He wears camo Crocs. <laughs> I'm not joking. He has camo Crocs. I want the I want the elevated camo Crocs, the high top camos. They have a high top camo. They have a high top camo. April Olsen had them. I saw them. I was like, bitch, I will <sighs> knock you over just to grab them. Add them for to your wish list. Hey guys. <laughs> camo crocs oh my god that's so funny <laughs> so what are your favorite kinds of scenes to shoot girl girl boy girl gonzo scenes with no dialogue i love features. acting scenes okay i love feature like f- like i love that i love okay. that it's fun it pushes me um most recent one i did was it's called sexual intelligence mm-hmm. and i was i wasn't a human i was um an ai Mm-hmm. So I had to not have like emotions and not have like influx in my my voice. I had to just be talk like a robot, right? And yeah. so it's really fun and interesting to like test that side. Like I know how to fuck. That's fine. Like mm-hmm. cool, done it, do it, whatever. Acting's fun. I think mm-hmm. those are my most interesting ones. Anything with a storyline. Yeah, yeah. And you're good at it too. I mean, we only did that girl girl scene for your treat of the month shoot which was very um which was pretty simple but you you were good and you were natural yeah in front of the camera I just like I just like making it me and I'm like okay cool let's do it yeah is there any uh kind of like character that you would love to play that you haven't had an opportunity to do yet I want to do some kind of parody I don't care what I would love it to be a Halloween parody okay in some kind of way. Mm. But even superheroes fine. But I just want to do some kind of When you say Halloween, do you mean the holiday or do you mean the movie? Like Either. the like the like Either. the hockey anything, mask. Anything like like Halloweeny. Okay. Yeah. Anything like fucked up kind of like that. Like Okay. Yeah, I think that would be fun cuz I was um a scene in the deranged one that came out for Wicked mm-hmm. and that was about like Tommy Pistol was a murderer. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And like I die, but you don't see me die. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to do something more. I'm like, okay, well, I want to be, I want to do something fun and creepy. Mm-hmm. I think that's my. Do you like Halloween? I love everything but clowns. I went to a party with uh, Cody Steele and Vanna Bardot, mm-hmm. and they were like, hey, it's for our friend. Like, just just come. And it's like, cow- she said cowboy party. I said cool, or she said rodeo. I was like, cool, no big deal. And I tell people I'm scared of clowns, but having a phobia is different. And there's a lot of people that either don't take it seriously and they think I'm exaggerating or they don't truly understand what a phobia really is. Mm-hmm. And so we, I was like, what do we wear? She's like, cowgirl. I was like, cool. Carnival, fine. Knock on the door. We walk in. I set the drinks down and I look over. They're right here. They're waiting on his, his their friend to come over. And I see a fucking clown. I see a fucking clown and I look up and I look at her and I'm like, there's a clown here. And then another one walks in and I was like, why are there clowns here? I'm my hands are sweating. Like even now I fucking freaked out. And so like their, their friend came over and they're like, Hey, and I'm like, hi. And he's like trying to shake my hand. And I was like awkward. And I was, he was like fist bump. I was like, I don't like clowns. Was he dressed as a clown? That one wasn't, but oh. everyone was like face makeup and everything, like full blown fucking clown. Ah, and he, I started like tearing up, and I started stuttering, and you can hear it now. Mm-hmm. Ah, and he was like, "Do you want to go outside?" I was like, "Yeah." So we walk outside, and I'm crying. This all happened within ninety seconds. Ninety seconds. I walk in. I freak out. I walk out. I'm like, "Hey, I'm I'm very terrified." She goes, "I know you said you were scared, but I didn't." And I was like, "No, no, 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 no. I will run him over." I was like, 
I will no, we are not doing this. We're not doing this. Like when those clowns are running the streets a few years ago, I, I, I'll hit them. I'll hit them. And I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. And so they, he was like, do you want some weed? I have some weed inside. I was like, no, no, that's fine. He goes, do you want some pizza? I was like, I don't want anything from where the clowns are. <laughs> He's like, well, it's just going to get worse. That was all the party was. I was like, could you imagine if I'm this freaked out just right now, if I was standing there and this motherfucker came and just honked a fucking man, man I would have panicked. I would have ran outside like it was a fucking Halloween movie and panicked and cried. I feel like you need to work through this with a clown gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Did you leave the party? Yeah, 100%. Within 90 seconds, I was like, I can't be here. Wow. I, I have gotten kicked out of haunted houses because they touch me and I will panic. And then they like see me as a target because it's ha- like haunted houses. Yeah, wait, how do you like manage Halloween? I, I don't. Any, I, if I avoid, there's Because clowns are like, that's. They're not that common. Except haunted houses. And after the no. last one I got kicked out of. Yeah. I mean, I punched him, but he touched me. Oh. He was following me. He touched me multiple times. And I was like, bro, I'm scared of clowns. Don't touch me. And so he came and he like tapped me. So I jumped this way and then he grabbed me. Wait, he grabbed you? He grabbed me. Oh, yeah. No, that's not okay. And I told him, I was like, if you touch me, I'm touching you. And I was yelling that every time we'd walk into her and I'm like, you touch me, I'm touching back at this point. Mm-hmm. And I hit him and he's like, oh, you hit me. I'm like, don't touch me. They're like, you got to go. And I was like, you can say it nicely. Tell me to leave politely and then I'll walk out. Because he tried to use the scary, you have to go. And I'm like, "Mm -mm, mm -mm. (laughs) talk to me nicely and I'll leave this building. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's funny. It's funny because I have sort of like a weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have it so much anymore. I mean, I don't have any fetishes anymore because I'm old and tired. But um, <laughs> like clown fetishes were kind of like I always like you wanted, wanted to, to fuck be a clown? fucked by an angry clown, like not like it's got to be like creepy and weird. It's hot. Lay, uh, I had um, I had Leia Falcon on, and um, she has a clown gangbang dream, and I was like, oh my god, I'd love to film that. That'd be so funny. But then I was thinking about like how difficult it would be because every guy in the scene is wearing he has to keep his clown shoes on. And like these just big ass feet. Thing. Yeah. And like you just when you think about a gangbang, you think about like all those guys feet around you and just imagine all difficult. of those big like clown feet <laughs> around and they're just like tripping on each other. And like because your balance is off. I just I don't know. I just feel like it would be difficult. I think it'd be hilarious, though. It would be hilarious. I think that would be the good point. About you can it. you can come like PA mm-hmm. for me. Respectfully decline. <laughs> <laughs> they say you know to get over phobias you gotta like no that's a fear get in that's it that's a fear get in it not a it's phobia. like if you're scared of spiders you have to be like dropped in a box full of spiders could you imagine I think you just Heart need attack. to be gang banged by a bunch of clowns and then you'll I will not and then make you'll, it you'll, you'll, you will I will you not make what? it you know what I, I, I will be- have a heart attack no I believe in you I think you can do it I think you're strong you're enough to make it through a clown you're putting gang. way too much faith in me <laughs> That that exceeds the limit of what I can give you. I'm so sorry, but I'm the wrong bitch. <laughs> Fine. Oh, my hands are sweaty. They're <laughs> sitting right now. <laughs> um, okay, uh, last question for you before we wrap this up. Um, is penis size important to you? No. Really? Really. Are you just saying that because? No. So I think girth is. Okay. So, that, I mean, that's size, but you're saying length yeah. isn't important. Because I've had, like, I've had some big dicks, like mm-hmm. dread, that can go balls deep. But then I've had, like, some smaller dicks that I'm like, ow, what are you, like, hitting, sir? But mm-hmm. that's, like, dread's a foot longer than this other person. So, mm-hmm. but it's, it's he's thicker mm-hmm. than this. So, I think whatever it is, it's just, I like thickness. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, like, if it's too skinny, it's like tampon mm. it's like more it's like sharper yeah maybe the thicker ones yeah. are like more blunted and it's just it so. feels it, i like bigger like wider i just okay. i like just stuff me that's why okay. i did double badge <laughs> it's like just put it in okay so so if a guy has a shorter penis but it's thicker you're okay i don't think that. i'll go smaller than like six six and a half okay that's pretty, I think the average is technically five and a half, mm-hmm. but 
Like yeah. so a little bit bigger than average. Six is like I think pretty normal. But if it's if it's that, it has to have some girth. It can't mm-hmm. just be like Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta at least be like three finger. Okay. So I mean there is some there's a there are some bit. parameters there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What if it was a clown with Ooh. a thick dick? I think I would need some scissors. <laughs> Don't come near me, sir. Oh my god. That's All right. I Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Fuck McDonald's. Okay. Uh, Maddie, it's been a pleasure. Love you as always. I'm sorry I, I talked about clowns so much, but no, it's okay. I'm just I've got adrenaline now. I'm gonna go run like a 5K. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the gym and squat so I can so I can beat off the clowns. Get all that negative clown energy out of you. Yeah, just leave it there. Well, I hollow I know Halloween is coming up. Um, I think actually by the time this releases, it'll be just before I think this one's gonna come out just before Halloween. Fun. Um so Happy hopefully Halloween. you won't have any clown experiences for your Halloween. Well, I am going to the the Dis- the universal Halloween night. So we'll see. You're totally gonna see fucking clowns there. Well, Vanna said that she'll help. <laughs> She, what, what is she going to do? Like cover your eyes? Go this way. I guess. I don't this know. Is me your clown spotter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me when you see one. Just caca. Just caca for me. <laughs> Get a whistle. Start blowing it. Be a referee. <laughs> far enough, sir. I'm far enough. Well, I wish you a um, happy and clown free Halloween. Thank you so much. <laughs> that means the world. I hope you, you have your clown fantasy with your husband. <laughs> Um, I actually know. I think I know what we're going to... Do you know what you're going to dress up for Halloween as? No. I think I know. What are you going to be? I think we're going to dress up my daughter as a monkey, and then we're going to be bananas. <laughs> That's what he wants to do. It's like Curious George vibes. Yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. Like I just think she, he just thinks she would look really cute as a monkey, and for some bananas. reason... You have to be. Yeah. Maybe we could have sex in our banana suits. That could be hot <gasps> and different. That would be fun. Yeah. That would be really fun. Yeah. There's like a clownish vibe though, because clowns like slip on banana peels a lot, don't they? Isn't like part of their routine? I don't know. Why do you have a clown phobia? Do you know? Yeah. So whenever I was a kid, my papa had a friend who, or my dad, one of the two had a friend and he put me on his lap. And I don't know why this was a game. It was for a long time. Even with my grandpa, he was like, I'm going to cut your ear off. And it's the South. And he'd like flip his knife around and like pretend to cut my ear off. Well, his friend had like just like hair like this and he put on a nose and then he did that, but it actually cut my fucking ear. So then like my papa thought it was just. So this is why you got into porn. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. This is, this is exactly it. This my, is the traumatic childhood. This is the, this, is the, this is the trauma. And then when I was 16, my papa, so my boyfriend at the time, like we went through a haunted house. He picked me up and told them I was scared and let them all grab me, terrified me. And then we lived on a farm so my papa paid like four neighbor kids to wear like the scariest clown mask I think he could fucking find. We had one street light on my street, mind you, one. And it was not right in front of my house. It was like over. And so they took the batteries out of um, the little garage code thingy and locked all the windows and doors. And so the ki- one of the kids said trick or treat. I opened the door. They pushed me out, locked me and turned off the lights. And then the kids started coming at me. I was like 16. I punched a 12 year old in the throat. He, gra- he grabbed me. He grabbed me. And I took off running and I ran like three streets down and waited till my mom's, my friend's mom came and grabbed me. Jesus <laughs> I was Christ. traumatized. The clown chased me out of another haunted house because my cousin was like, hey, she's scared of them. So rightfully, you would traumatize your, your niece even more. Yeah. And so like he chased me like through the parking lot. Like I came out of the haunted house and he kept chasing me wow. with a chainsaw. So yeah, wow. I'm deathly afraid of clowns. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fucked up. That's why I don't like clowns. That's okay. why I'll run them over. Whew. Wow. Well, I never <laughs> had any of those experiences, which is why I probably like clowns. So enjoy your banana suit fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make us a banana split. Oh, that's okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, Maddie, can you tell everybody where they can find you online, please? You can find me on Instagram at Real Maddie May. Twitter, it's May Mayhem, like the movie, like my movie. Um, TikTok is Maddie May 3X. And my website, MaddieMayXO.com. Fabulous. There you go. And you guys can find me, of course, at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter if you want to watch these. 
podcasts live streamed, um, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I will see you next week. Blue Chew is making waves. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship directly to you. You can try it for free. Just pay $5 in shipping by going to bluechew.com and entering code HOLLY to get your first month's subscription.